Have you ever painted a dark future miniature? So when it comes to painting dark future miniatures, they are normally cars. There's a few infantrymen spread out amongst the miniatures, but it is mostly cars, a couple of motorbikes, and maybe some homemade trucks. I say homemade, I mean converted from an old kit, or perhaps a toy of sorts. But if you've painted them, you've probably tried to paint them in a realistic style, as opposed to your more, what's the word for this? Your more cartoony style, your more warhammery style, your more arty style. It's an interesting phrase which I can't come up with in my head. Anyway, dark future miniatures always looked more realistic as they were painted in a more realistic style. Do you think that was an easy style to paint or would you rather go with the more warhammery style what is the word for this i need to find out the name of this you had realistic and fake maybe you had realistic and false realistic and fantasy should we go with fantasy a fantasy paint scheme but that doesn't work with a science fiction background does it anyway we're moving off topic big time here. Now, some of your dark future cars might have been converted from Matchbox or Hot Wheels toy cars. You might have got some toy guns and stuck them on, little turrets here and there, little rocket launchers on the side. And I imagine you thought they looked quite cool. You mustn't forget the, um, hello, I'm not waving, the grill that would go across the windscreen. You see them on police riot vans a lot of the time. I'm not 100% sure on what the correct term is for those. There's also another game very similar to Dark Future and it's called Gaslands and a lot of people and a lot of people are painting and converting toy cars for their Gaslands games. I've never played Gaslands. I don't like the name Gaslands. I think it's awful. But anyway, never played it, never going to play it and I'm going to stick with Dark Future if I'm going to do any more post-apocalyptic games. It's very hard to say post-apocalyptic. The Pocky Clips, as they call it in Mad Max. Some of these people building and painting these cars might have also used maybe some model kits. They might have been in the right scale. You probably wouldn't have used Scalectrix cars. I'm pretty sure they're in 1 second scale. They would have been a bit too large. Almost as big as our famous uh, Sylvanian family's truck. Not sure why that's still on the painting table. Better do something about that. Now you'll also find if you look for some official Dark Future car kits, they are quite expensive on eBay. I've looked at a few and refused to buy them as I'm not paying those sorts of prices. Somebody out there is, and they must have one hell of a collection of Dark Future cars, and I'd like to see them. The infantry, on the other hand, can be quite hard to find. There's not too many on eBay and especially not in their blisters. Normally it's a couple of intrinsic, intrinsic, in in a couple of infantrymen sort of spread thinly across eBay. That came out completely wrong. Anyway, what I mean to say is there's not a lot of infantry for Dark Future available out there for purchase, unless you're selling any. If you are, let us know in the comments below. Now, sadly, because I'm looking for these cars for a sensible price, I'm finding it hard to get around to my project of painting some Dark Future Interceptors, which are the ones that look like a Le Mans car. Not the buggies, they are known as the Renegade vehicle, I believe, but the red Le Mans car lookalike is the Interceptor. And I'd like to paint some of those in the style of the artwork on the box, which is a nice bright red with a few logos spread around the bodywork. So anyway, let's take a look at painting Dark Future miniatures. A new theme, a new scale, a new challenge. But nevertheless, the same techniques for vehicles and figures that have been written about many times. Base colours, ink washes and dry brushed highlights are all the order of the day. Of course, some of you out there will want to develop state-of-the-art finishes on your vehicles, just like the real thing. And yes, you could go out and buy car paint sprays and do it that way, but it's expensive and smelly. Some gang members hit the street. Members of the Terminal VIP gang 
looking for trouble. Some more members of the Terminal VIP gang. A converted Dark Future Renegade by Tony Cottrell using mesh, plasticard, stretched sprue for aerials and plastic parts from his bits box. Some well-armed cops and a painted die-cast car. Some SWAT team members. Operative Johnny Reb Johnson and his car. Some chaos cultists intent on destruction. A typical biker ready for action. A G-Force operative and his interceptor. Some heroes and villains. A wreck converted by Dave Andrews from a die-cast car, some card and some cotton wool. Part of the Maniac's road gang with biker escort. Fine scale brass mesh from railway shops, thick wire from high voltage cable were all used in conversions by Sid. Nola Gay, Red Harvest's interceptor. A plastic interceptor painted by Darren Matthews. A close up of Darren Matthews' design. One of the few plastic trucks available to this scale from model shops. This one was converted and painted by Darren Matthews. A die-cast car which was grimly painted by Sid. Light and fast, a Sand Devil's Renegade. This is a well-armed Renegade. The distinctive colours of Cajun Jack de Boursin. The rear view of Cajun Jack's Interceptor. This is an early studio prototype of an interceptor with twin rear-facing missile launchers. Paramilitary colours on this Spiders from Mars Renegade. The Spiders from Mars motto. A stylized skull and crossbones on this sleek looking interceptor. A side view of the same interceptor. The wheel flames are a favourite design of both operatives and outlaws. Another early metal prototype from the studio complete with machine gun damage. Vehicles are relatively easy to paint, particularly if you're a dab hand at dry brushing which is ideal for creating dusty road effects. The miniatures we've just seen are a combination of new plastic kits, some early development metal models commercial kits, the trucks, and toys, you know, the sort that kids zoom across the carpet. If you look at the Nola Gay Interceptor and the Renegade with the camouflage scheme, you will notice a transparent plastic windshield on the former and open body structure on the latter. Interior detail is present and both have been designed to take model drivers. For the conversion fiend, the plastic kit vehicles the cars and the bikes are a joy. Roll bars, aerials, window grills and armament can all be added to suit your taste. And the flat surfaces are spot on for those gang badges and symbols. Of course Games Workshop would never offer such wondrous hardware without figures to match. Ops, chainsaw warriors, bikers, punks, chicos, cops, Chaos cultists and SWAT teams will all be available. Those figures have been remarkably executed by Alan Perry, based by a large degree on the artwork of expert artist Pete Nifton. They really do capture the street level feel of anarchic America. Don't be put off by their size either, approximately 24mm from the foot to the top of the head. Okay so they can't accommodate quite as much detail as their larger fantasy cousins, but their more simplistic design is wonderfully authentic. Paint them just like you would paint any other figure. The finer detail will evade many of you, but that's no bad thing at this scale. An impression of a face with dark shading in the eye socket area may result in a better painted figure 
than one with overloaded detail. And that's going to be a boon for those of you who haven't yet mastered dotting the pupil. Now, when I'm using my airbrush to do my miniature painting, I use a yog, 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 yogi bear. I normally use this Vallejo, I was gonna call it model air, it's Vallejo airbrush thinners of 71.161. And if you read the side of the tub here, you can't quite make that out. It's too bright, it's just too bright. You need sunglasses for this. But if you read it, it says, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Andrew. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here. Black features quite heavily. Punks, bikers, cultists and SWAT teams, for example. And from experience, it has become evident that a few of you are intimidated by black, as you cannot shade it. We've dealt with that subject in some painting articles before, and described various techniques for avoiding flat black. Dark future figures need not be nearly as rich as chaos figures though. A simple, dusty, grim look is required, and that is no problem. All you do is paint the base colour black, allow it to dry and dry brush it up with greys, browns or beige. It's up to you how much pigment to apply and exactly which way to direct the colour. Very limited and subtle dry brushing leaves the figures virtually jet black. Heavy dry brushing, bringing the base colour into the browns and beige, can create the worn and dusty effects that you see on the average street Mohican or badass biker. For cops, just dry brush them up with dark blue. It's easy. Other colours, which feature a great deal, are camo green and denim blue. Again, the effects are easily achieved with dry brushing techniques. Look at all the miniatures. All the figures were painted with Citadel colours and inks. The hardest elements are bound to be the back patches and other insignia, but there's no easy answer to this. It's up to you and your experience of fine detail work. There is a lot of potential here, so get to it. So that was some advice on painting dark future miniatures. What did you think of that? Did you use any, adv any advice? Did you use any of that advice? Would you use any of that advice? Do you think it was terrible advice? Have you ever painted any dark future miniatures? Would you like to paint some dark future miniatures? Which dark future miniatures would you like to paint? Let us know in the comments below. Do you think it's hard painting miniatures in a realistic style as opposed to the the Warhammery fantasy style, the heavy metal style. Shall we use that name? We still haven't decided on a term for that. If you can think of a better term, let us know in the comments below. Oh, my hand is fast today. My hands are so fast. Now, if you are looking to buy some Dark Future miniatures, the cars come in a set called Battle Cars, and that's the same name as an old Games Workshop game, also called Battle Cars. But the cars in the set are called Battle Cars also, and on the front of the box, there's a red renegade buggy jumping off a cliff with a couple of interceptors in the background and I think they're blue. You also get the same miniatures in the day Days, Days of, Thunder. of Thunder. That's a good miniature game. No it isn't. It's a movie with Tom Cruise and Nicole not Scherzinger. Kidman. That's her name. Not sure why we went down the Days of Thunder Road there. Thunder Road. That's a good board game isn't it? There's all these exciting names in my mind. No need to tell you about them all. One day but not today. So anyway they came in that battle cars box set or you could get them in the dark future base game box set i'm not sure which would be your best avenue to pursue there you best go and have a goosey on ebay let me know how you get on let me know now the red interceptors remind me of the car in the computer game road blasters and the way you plug the guns in also remind me of the matchbox toys 
called Road Blasters. What came first, the Matchbox cars or the video game? I don't actually know. We could head off to Google and find out. But I'm sure one of you in the comments will let us know without us having to go having to go to go to go without us having to go anywhere near Google. If you want to see some more old hammer videos, and I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching and always remember to drill your barrels, especially on your cars. Your exhaust pipes would have been a good idea.